XRP community. Welcome back to the channel. It's me, James Rule XRP. Follow me on Twitter at Rule XRP. It is Saturday and there is some exciting news going on with XRP today. The prices are going through the roof. If you own or if you're just getting into XRP, congratulations. If you've been holding XRP like me for three years, congratulations to you. We are seeing some things happen let me show you what i posted i posted this earlier today on twitter and it says to all the xrp haters who is your daddy now mic drop this is from mr c at baba cugs he said never forget this tweet this was tweeted by david schwartz the cto of ripple he goes by at joel Katz on July 1st, 2018, and he quoted, if XRP is successful for any reason, Ripple can make a lot of money for its stockholders by selling its XRP. The same is true of every other XRP holder. That's just a fact. I'm not saying that will happen, but it could happen. Hello. All right. Digital asset investor retweeted this from Shur Khan at Shur Khan 1981. While the whole world was having a big old party, few outsiders and weirdos saw what no one else could. XRP, baby. David Gockstein. I'll be buying XRP. I'm trying to get this pink Lamborghini. Your XRP purchase is now available on Coinbase. Way to go, David. You're doing the right thing, buddy. And real XRP boy at boy underscore XRP agreed. But from my perspective, considering the potential market XRP is going after, entry positions at these price levels are never a bad idea. Sure, we could drop. That's a gamble we all have to accept. I've said it before. What if XRP never looks back? Onward. Great point, real XRP boy. You need to follow him on Twitter. Let's look at Fiat Lake. For some reason, I cannot get the individual transactions on Fiat Lake to pop up. I don't know if they're overloaded right now. Let's see. Let me hit refresh. <clears throat> nope, it's not going to do it. XRP is almost, oh my gosh. XRP is 29 cents, baby. If you own XRP, congratulations. It is 29 cents. This is kick ass get excited if you bought xrp last week or a year ago or three years ago get excited because today is tremendous these prices are going up let's go to my favorite coinpaprika.com this is the total market cap let me refresh it the total market cap is up to 355 billion 159 million dollars 24 hours ago it was at 330 eight billion dollars unbelievable let's look at the specific cryptocurrencies come on okay bitcoin is currently at eleven thousand six hundred ninety four dollars up 21 percent on the week ethereum is up to three hundred and seventy seven dollars and thirty one cents up 28 percent for the week XRP is 28.8. It just showed 29. I'm going to call it 29 cents. Way to go. XRP, 29 cents, up 35.98% for the week. Let's go check on VeChain. VeChain, what is going on, buddy? I'm invested in VeChain. What? What's up? I think people are getting the fear of missing out on Bitcoin and XRP, and they are selling their VeChain. That's just my speculation. Poor guys, you should have held. <laughs> anyway, let's go to this article, <clears throat> excuse me, that came out today. No, I'm sorry, July 27th from Forbes. It says rock bottom interest rates are driving a boom in cryptocurrencies. And it was written by Robert Huang or Huang, contributor, crypto and blockchain. And I'm going to close this advertisement and I'm going to read it for you. Bear with me. 
After a period of time where it seemed like cryptocurrencies and all financial products with a bit of risk were being shelved in favor of low-risk products such as holding cash or government bonds, specifically the U.S. dollar and treasuries, the actions of the Federal Reserve and other central banks have caused a roar back in equity markets and a corresponding increase in cryptocurrency values. Since March 15, 2020, when the Federal Reserve cuts rates to zero in an unscheduled rate cut, the S&P 500 had its best quarter since 1998, and Bitcoin's price about to touch, to touch 5,000 USD around that time is now roaring back above the 10,000 mark. Understanding the relationship between monetary policy and cryptocurrencies can be a bit tricky, but it's a worthy exercise. As cryptocurrencies start taking on institutional speculation, their short-term price movements gyrate with the markets. Some of this has been plainly stated before and often observed. Some institutional investors think of Bitcoin as digital gold. They'll use Bitcoin as a hedge against the inflation they think will result from excessive unconventional monetary policy. This was the explicit view of Paul Tudor Jones, the billionaire investor loading up on Bitcoin. In his reading, the actions of central banks help create demand for cryptocurrencies by creating the conditions excessive money supply, wherein a certain class of institutional investors feel the need to hedge their wealth. But structural changes in monetary policy implementation also augur surprising new developments and support for new cryptocurrencies in ways that go beyond the cryptocurrency as hedge narrative. Witness the new trend of DeFi, decentralized finance companies that are largely behind the growth in Ethereum demand as Ethereum gets locked into new financial products. DeFi represents alternative financial solutions built on Ethereum that are looking to augment or replace traditional loans. Typically, there is, there's a search for yield that happens when there are very few options to yield money in deposits or low-risk products. DeFi, with interest rates that range as high as 100% annualized, annualized, annualized on stable coins, looks like a more attractive option than fiat banks that can offer a flat one, minus 1% 1 at best. <clears throat> Within that structure, it's clear that there are nuances and perhaps warnings, products that yield that high likely or pure arbitrage situations that might fade away at any time and then carry with them risks such as exploits that might be underaccounted for. Yet, even if there are a lot of question marks, there's no doubt that coordinated monetary policy around the world is driving people to look for new companies and technologies such as DeFi an important secondary consequence. The amount of unprecedented monetary support has also created a short-term window for institutional investors to, to be able to enter cryptocurrencies. Grayscale Investments, LLC, attracted more than $900 million in the second quarter, which was double any amount it had ever raised before. Most of that interest was spurred by institutional investors who were supported by monetary policy and placed in a search for yield and hedge-seeking situation. Some of that was due to arbitrage, but there's no doubt that institutional investors that were battening down the hatches when COVID-19 lockdowns were happening are back as a force across a variety of economic investments, including cryptocurrencies. Some of this institutional investment comes on the heels of leading figures in the industry looking for shelter during the largest monetary expansion in history. This helps accentuate the short-term trend which institutional investors suddenly find the context the need and the support to start pouring into investments in cryptocurrencies. Beyond these factors, however, is a potential pending development of a digital dollar. This is not being pushed by monetary authorities, but rather heard in the fiscal halls of power in Congress. Yet research in this area will spur interest in cryptocurrencies by confirming the digital ascendancy of finance into retail cash and creating a contrast and another item that might highlight cryptocurrency's usefulness as a hedge. It is, however, the greater retail adoption of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies that is more interesting than the short-term movements associated with institutional investors pushed by the monetary policy in one way or another towards cryptocurrencies. A new study from Cornerstone Advisor says that 15% of Americans now own some cryptocurrency, with about half of those having invested in the first six months of 2020, among unprecedented monetary policy changes and COVID-19. High-income millennials and Gen Xers were some of the groups spurring this growth. 
Americans who don't hold cryptocurrencies and had no plans to do so thought their financial health stayed the same, 55%, mostly while a plurality of those that currently hold cryptocurrencies thought that their financial health was much better, 44%. Cryptocurrencies are getting short-term boost in pricing from a wave of institutional and retail investors with a variety of incentives, many of them brought on by the large monetary expansion of our age. Some of these incentives are here for the long haul, as monetary authorities struggle with the short-term effects of the COVID pandemic and the longer-haul efforts to fully recover economically. Monetary policy during COVID is acting as a bridge to cryptocurrencies for many new institutional and retail investors skeptic of its effects and perhaps an enduring reason to stay in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. Refresh. XRP, 28.9 cents. We're going to call it 29 cents. It is owned like Donkey Kong. It is time to get excited. It is extremely time. Boom, there, drop the mic. That's all I have to say. Hey, if you're new to this space, please do your own research. Uh, if you're brand new to crypto and you're watching this video and you, you've never purchased cryptocurrency before, go to coinpaprika.com and it will show you the top 100 cryptocurrencies by market cap. Click on each one of them to understand what they are used for, if they have a use case, and look at the prices, do your research, Google them, study the company, study the white papers. There's a ton of information to be understood. Don't get the fear of missing out or FOMO and spend your entire paycheck or your life savings on crypto. This is James Rule XRP. Have a safe weekend. Take care of yourself. Get excited, and we will see you soon. Take care.